Be careful what you say, for what you say can be internalized and then transformed into something dark and ferocious. And that's what we witness with this Pokemon. However, we also see that you can overcome these boundaries, reaching enlightenment and becoming the voice of life. This is the Pokemon Hydragon. Starting its life as an irate and feisty dragon type Pokemon, Dino is actually blind. Now how did such a thing occur? Well, partly because of the environment that it lives in, which is in caves with an abundance of water, potentially resulting in the cave blindness. These caves also seem to lack an abundance of food options, meaning that Dino will eat anything that moves, and as a way to understand its surroundings, it'll start to ram and bite anything that it comes in contact with. Due to this type of orienting behavior, Dino are constantly getting hurt and injured, and this is reinforced in the games as the only ability of Dino and Zylus is Hustle, which increases your attack at the cost of your accuracy or eyesight. Also, in the overall design of Dino, there are six purple spots that encircle its neck, and these resemble bruises from all the self-inflicted damage of navigation. The tail is another indicator that Dino really doesn't like itself, as it looks as though it's been bitten and ripped off. Now, if you happen to own a Dino, you're likely going to be covered in all types of bites and bruises as Dino starts to get to know you, and eventually it'll warm up to you, but that takes some time. Now, Dino does have an incredible sense of smell, and it will use this to memorize various scents of its favorite things to eat and the scent of its trainer. Additionally, if you've seen the anime Pokemon the series Black and White as a way to show affection towards its trainer, it may rear up on its hind legs when it is happy. Very clearly, Dino is based on a juvenile dragon with some traits of a seropod. The blindness and the desire to live within caves indicates that there is some inspiration from certain cave salamanders that have lost their eyes due to this cave blindness. Also, the hair or fur of Dino closely resembles the hairstyle of your stereotypical emo or emo hairstyle. And I personally think this is the reason why they're blind. Their hair just covers up everything except Except their mouths, I think that would be hilarious. And finally, particularly as it evolves, that it's based on the Hydra or Yamato no Orochi from Greek and Japanese mythology respectively. The name Dino is going to be a combination of Dino, short for dinosaur, Deinonychus, which is the dinosaur that existed during the Cretaceous period, and also Dinos, which is an ancient Greek work. There's a bunch of words for this, but it can essentially mean terrible. And finally, Ein, which is German for one, and that numbering system system is seen in all subsequent evolutions. Dino evolved at the ridiculous level of 50 into the two-headed behemoth Zwilus. Now, despite evolving, its overall self-perception and general animosity and dislike of itself has remained and, to be honest, has even grown more intense. So, despite being physically identical, both of Zwilus' heads has its own likes and dislikes and even personality. As a result, they are constantly battling for supremacy. Now, this is primarily done through an eating competition. The head that eats the most is crowned the champion and seen as the dominant head. Now, what does the resulting champion gain? Well, none other than the ability to determine their next hunting ground so that can eat some more. Now, just because there are two heads, this does not mean that they have two stomachs, so they are commonly overeating. And if you're thinking that this might result in being weighed down literally because all the food, they do have a wider and more round belly because of eating. But also keep in mind that the two heads are constantly fighting with each other. So even if there aren't any rivals, Rivals or opposing Pokemon to battle, they are still gaining strength, developing, and even burning off energy. Now, a consequence of this fighting is that it has scars and injuries all over its body. Similar to Dino, Zwilus' primary habitat is in caves, meaning it too is functionally blind. So, how do they hunt? 
and then migrate to hunt some more once they clear their current area if they're blind? Well, through a haphazard and sloppy method. They will randomly charge and bite seemingly at random in hopes of catching their prey off guard. The strength of their skulls and bite force make quick work of any Pokemon that is unfortunate to get caught. And remember, they do have that great sense of smell so they can track down their likes and foods if they catch a whiff of you. Now, Zwilus are nomadic Pokemon, so their migration patterns can be more random as it is not bound to any other Pokemon other than itself or it selves. Similar to Dino, Zwilus is inspired by cave salamanders, the Hydra, Yamato no Orochi, and Zmi Gorinich, which is a cunning and deceptive dragon or serpent that's in Slavic folklore, and it has green scales and a head count of three, or it multiplies. And that green color may inspire Zwilus's shiny coloration. The tank tread-like markings on Swilus' body appears to be a remnant of the past evolutionary line because it was originally designed after tanks. Zwilus, the name, is going to be a combination of Zwei, which is German, for two, Jealous, as the heads are always fighting over food, and Zealous, and that could be reflecting their ferocious appetite and intensely competitive nature. And finally, the Pokemon that has the latest evolution by level up, which is 64, the pseudo-legendary Pokemon, the brutal Pokemon, Hydragon, takes the stage. Hydragon are widely known to be some of the most ruthless, brutal, and violent Pokemon you will ever encounter. They will scour highlands and caves and the air, yes, they can fly, attacking and eating anything that it encounters. They will wield all three heads, alternating their ferocious and vicious attacks and bites, not stopping until their foe has fallen. Additionally, all three mouths can eat. This is similar to its pre-evolution Zylus. Now allow me to clarify. How did two heads become three? As we know, Zwilus's head will become dominant. At least one head will become dominant. And that is the head that would become the main head of Hydragon. The second head of Zwilus will actually die off in a way or kind of wither away, becoming the two head hands of Hydragon, both of which can eat and breathe, but they lack a brain, so obviously they can't think. Hydragon's central head is actually quite intelligent and coupled with its really hostile and violent thoughts is an unbelievably fierce competitor and battler. And what makes this Pokemon even more dangerous is that when it evolved, it developed eyes. That's right, it can see. But another thing to note about its evolution is that their legs seem to have disappeared or atrophied. Or even similar to the tail of Dino, maybe they were ripped off? But as a result, they are typically living in high places because they are constantly hovering and flying around, leading to one singular ability, being the only pseudo-legendary Pokemon to have one ability, which is Levitate. Now, despite their naturally ferocious nature, they do fear Noivern at night. This is due to the fact that despite having eyes, their vision is pretty poor, and Noivern is at its strongest during the night, using its ultrasonic blasts and waves to destroy opponents and swiftly navigate the darkness. The dragon have also been seen to be quite gentle, caring, and obedient to any trainer skilled enough to tame it. It will even allow their trainers to fly on their backs. In the game Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity, Hydragon is seen to be wise and kind, and they represent and embody the voice of life. They are very endearingly quirky and will assist the heroes throughout the game. Now why are they so vicious and hostile though? Well, ancient people despised and hated Hydragon, believing that it was evil incarnate. As a result, they will hunt it and banish it and just overall treat it really nasty. I also believe that that hatred is what caused Hydragon and the entire evolution line to engage in such self-destructive and harmful behaviors. It internalized the hatred from these ancient people and they too, Hydragon I mean, started to hate themselves. 
which is actually quite tragic. Now, inspirations of Hydragon come from Yamato no Orochi. It comes from the Hydra. It comes from the Zmi Gorinich. It has the tank tread-like markings on its body. And the presence of the smaller heads on its arms can be reminiscent of hand puppets. Now, in addition to the Hydra, there are also other many-headed antagonistic dragons and serpents in various mythologies. There is the Zahak and the Welbeghem. The late evolution of Hydragon, again at level 64, might be a hint in reference to the year 1964, and this is the year of the fifth film in the Godzilla franchise. And guess who made its appearance? Well, none other than Ghidorah the three-headed monster and nemesis of Godzilla. It can also be based on polycephaly, which is an occurrence that causes organisms to be born with two or more heads. Hydragon may be a combination, the name of Hydra, Dragon, and Drei, which is German for three. And that is the history, lore, and facts of Hydragon. Um, of course, an incredibly cool design overall. It looks so sick, but I have a thing for like these underdogs or for for Pokemon that were mistreated when they shouldn't have been mistreated. And and just doing the research into it, that actually made me like uh, Hydragon and the entire evolution line even more. I would love to know your thoughts of this Pokemon down in the comments below as well as any other Pokemon you'd like me to do in the series. Thank you so much for all the support, and I ask that you check out some of our other lore videos and openings. Really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Peace!